900 Highland Drive in Homewood. My husband Scott and I lived here for 10 years. An empty lot where a house once stood. We had a really good life here. The house was built in 1923. Shelly Stevens owned the home from 1999 to 2009. It's just amazing how you can wipe out 100 years of history. There's almost no sign of it. Stevens worked with the Jefferson County Historical Commission to get an honorary marker for the home. You have to make a case for it. You have to go through tax records, find the original owners. This week, a developer tore the house down. I'm sad that I'm here standing in front of nothing. Stevens says they have plans to build five houses on the lot. I think that it is really shifting too far um, to the point that they can't recognize a home that had historic status. The Historical Society says the demolition of houses deemed historical is quote a shame and a crime. It's happening at an alarming rate. The Historical Commission says this empty lot is an example of what's happening all over the county, something residents say they'll no longer stand for. I would like to do anything I can to just make people think a little more before they do this in the future. To preserve the city's history. In Homewood, Larissa Scott, WVTM 13. The Historical Commission says it's up to the city to pass an ordinance to keep developers from demolishing historical homes. The man acquitted in the death of a Hoover father now awaiting sentence in a different case. Charleston Wells was found guilty this afternoon on a reckless endangerment charge in Fultondale. His sentencing now set for January 11th. That'll be close. Uh, that'll be close to six months after a jury found him not guilty in Mike Gelati's death. New at five, the man accused of killing a Birmingham gas station clerk earlier this year was indicted for the crime. A Chandler Bryant charged with capital murder in the death of Mike Ganji. The indictment claims the Kenyan native was shot while Bryant tried to rob the Sitco station. A Ganji spoke with us after seeing his friend and co-worker shot at the same gas station six months before his own death. A grand jury indicted a Shelby County man for the death of Connie Woolweaver. Adam Burris is charged with murdering the Highland Lakes mother in December. She was shot in her home. Authorities say Burris was a friend and business associate. The man accused of killing a Shelby County gas station clerk made a plea for his life. Court documents show Michael Powell wants the death penalty off the table in his case. He's accused of shooting Tracy Alger last year. She was working when authorities say Powell came into the gas station, forced Alger into a bathroom and killed her. He's also accused of stealing money after the shooting. A new crop of Birmingham school leaders hoping to stop the revolving superintendent cycle. WVTM 13's John Papke talks to new school board members about their hopes for the future. It is no secret that the superintendent's office has not been a beacon of job security in Birmingham. Dr. Lisa Herring was hired in May. She is the city's fourth superintendent in nine years. We have filtered through far too many superintendents in the past five years. That's number one priority. Hi, Michael Millsap. Mickey Millsap was one of six new school board members sworn in Tuesday. Newcomer Mary Bone believes having Herring's back is key. I believe that this group as a whole, both the returning members and the new members, that is the thing we are dedicated to the most. Herring welcomed those votes of confidence. Knowing that that is what's being stated coming in, uh, that gets me that much more um, prepared for the work that we have to do. And this new school board will have a new unique connection at City Hall, only 100 yards away. The board's former president, Randall Woodfin, takes office as mayor in 34 days. Mayor-elect Woodfin, who understands this um, education system is now the leader of the city together. I think we can achieve great things. Bohm hopes bringing stability to the superintendent's office will only boost that achievement. In Birmingham, John Papke, WVTM 13. Herring came from the Jefferson County School District in Louisiana, or rather Louisville, Kentucky. She served as their top academic officer in a district with four times as many students as Birmingham. A federal review points out a flaw with Alabama's child welfare system. The civil rights branch of a federal health agency says Alabama's system wrongly denied services to people who couldn't fluently speak English. The review came after a complaint from a Guatemalan man trying to get custody of his daughter. Officials say Alabama didn't do enough to accommodate his needs and an investigation into the matter found similar issues. Alabama said it will provide better assistance as part of a settlement. The push to solve the Birmingham cold case is heating up. Justin Watford was killed more than two years ago in a shooting on Denison Avenue Southwest. Witnesses told investigators Watford was sitting in a car when someone opened fire. His family met with police today about the investigation. His grandmother says Watford was saving to buy a car after he lost his job because he didn't have transportation. He was just a life 
of the party when the family got together. He always had a bright smile on his face and he had a boundless love for his family. He was extremely protective of his mother and his sisters. There's a reward for information that helps solve Watford's murder. A lawsuit involving Alabama's former governor and aide and the former head of the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency is heading back to court. Defendants Robert Bentley, Rebecca Mason, and the Alabama Council for Excellent Government filed a motion to have the suit dismissed. Spencer Collier filed that suit, claiming he was wrongly fired from his job with the agency for refusing to lie to the attorney general. A judge will hear arguments on the motion on November 6th. An Alabama police officer will not face criminal charges in the deadly shooting of a teenager. Officials in Madison County say that shooting this summer was justified. Authorities say the officer opened fire after the teen backed a, a car into a patrol vehicle and pinned the officer. Alabama's Attorney General, <coughs> excuse me, Attorney General will take over a Montgomery shooting case tied to an attempted murder trial. The decision was made because of the county district attorney's closeness to the case. Jacquees Boones charged with capital murder after this week's shooting death of Colvin, rather Kelvin Cooley. He was killed just minutes after testifying against Boone in a 2014 case. That proceeding was declared a mistrial over fears this week's shooting could influence a jury. New at five, a former transit bus driver accused of attacking a student will remain behind bars. Tony Patillo appeared in court to request bond. He was originally granted one, then revoked after his ankle monitor didn't work properly. We're told the device was not tampered with, but the judge on the case said Patillo should have listened to all the instructions about the monitor. There's now a protective order against a former Alabama official. He's accused of stalking an ex-girlfriend. Court records show the order was granted against Stephen Nodeen, the former Mobile County Commissioner, previously accused of killing a girlfriend, but pleaded guilty to a lesser charge. That was brought up in the current protective order with the ex-girlfriend claiming she fears for her life. An attorney for the former official denies the charges. President Trump is offering new details about a military mission in Niger that left four U.S. servicemen dead. He told reporters he did not specifically authorize the operation, but has great generals who he gave authority to do what's right, so we win. I want to win, and we're going to win, and we're beating ISIS very badly. You look at what's happened in the Middle East. We have done more in eight months than the previous administration has done in many years. President Trump also addressed a phone call that's caused controversy in the wake of that mission. He said today he was really nice and respectful to Sergeant LaDavid Johnson's widow. Johnson was one of the four servicemen killed in Niger. Sergeant Johnson's widow said the president couldn't remember her husband's name during that condolence call. I certainly respect LaDavid, uh, who I, by the way, called LaDavid right from the beginning. Just so you understand, they put a chart in front, LaDavid, says LaDavid Johnson. So. I call it right from the beginning, there's no hesitation. As questions linger about that Niger mission, President Trump is facing a backlash from two senators on Capitol Hill. Today, the war of words heated up. WVTM 13 Sherry Falk is following this story for us. Sherry? Well, Lisa, this morning, President Trump took to Twitter to share his feelings about comments from within his own party. The president tweeted this message saying the reason Flake and Corker dropped out of the Senate race is very simple. They had zero chance of being elected. Now act so hurt and wounded. He's referring to Tennessee Senator Bob Corker and Arizona Senator Jeff Flake. Corker announced he wouldn't seek re-election several weeks ago, and Flake made a similar announcement yesterday, saying he is no longer comfortable with the current state of the Republican Party. Now, President Trump tweeted directly at Senator Flake shortly after his first one, saying Jeff Flake, with an 18% approval rating in Arizona, said a lot of my colleagues have spoken out. Really, they just gave me a standing O. Senator Flake addressed his big announcement this morning in a series of interviews, saying a number of colleagues on Capitol Hill share his concerns and he believes we've reached a tipping point. 